Yeah. Okay, number one is God can forgive you now, no matter what you have done in the past. God wants to forgive it. Now, I don't know everyone here personally. I know a couple people here. I've talked with a lot of people here. And we've shared stories. You know, we've shared our testimonies. Um, not just here, anywhere. Beverly Hills, Irvine. We're all sinners. No one's perfect. No one can say, I've been a good person all my life. And that's okay, because right here in Romans 5a, it tells you, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ. God gave his only son to die for our sins. And just like that, boom. You know, you're good. You're good to go. But why can't we accept that? Why can't we truly believe that? Why can't we have faith in that? Because we still, we still look at ourselves a certain way. We know that when people aren't looking, aren't watching, you know, we're cussing people out in traffic. I just recently was blessed with a truck and man, road rage just came back so fast. I hadn't drove for two years. But that, yeah, that first incident, I looked at myself in the mirror, the rear view mirror. I had to adjust it and say, wow, how can you act like this? You know, you've been blessed. And here you are, first time, you know, a couple hours behind the wheel and I start going off you know, about road rage to myself, and who, you know, no one's getting out the car, no one's moving out the way, it's all useless energy, but no matter what, no matter what you've done, no matter how crappy you felt, no matter how bad you think of a person, you know, you think of a person that you are, it's not true, it's not true, that's the enemy attacking you, that's the enemy telling you, ah, oh, you're worthless, you're a piece of crap, look where you're at, you're never going to get past this, you're just stuck here, just get comfortable. Just okay. feel complacent. Just accept it. And that's not true. That's not what God wants for all of us. He does not want all of that. He does not want you to be complacent here. I mean, if you look around, you can see like some really neat tents. You can see some really neat designs. There's some architects in here. There's some people here that, that have a gift. You guys have skills. You don't deserve to be here. This is just a chapter in our life. This is just part of the trials and tribulations that we have to go through. We have to suffer for Him. It builds character. All this that you're going through, that we're going through, because I'm homeless myself still. I may be blessed with a truck, but I'm sleeping in it. It's not comfortable for somebody who's 305 pounds. <laughs> Anyways, it builds character, people. Don't give up. Don't get stuck. Don't get complacent in that way of thinking. You need to change the way you think. Because he forgave us. He forgave us a long time ago. While we're still dragging and dwelling on all the bad, dwelling on the past, dwelling on the on, on the hurt, the frustration. He's, he's up there like, hey, man, I'm still waiting for you. Still waiting. Come on, man. Get over those feelings. I love you. I got great things planned for you over here. But you're still stuck dwelling on the bad on the old and when we give our life to christ when we say i believe when we acknowledge that he's our lord and savior it's all done right there buddies it's all right there boom okay new person he takes that sin he takes it. it's a process don't get me wrong it's a process for some of us it's a longer process you know but it's okay you just keep moving forward don't get stuck you're going through hell all right yeah i understand keep going keep walking Number two, God can handle all the problems of your life now. We, we just talked about that, didn't we? No matter what shape your life is in today, together, God and you can handle it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, any, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can be. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out. How many times have we been in the middle of a scenario, a situation, doesn't look good and by the second by the minute it's getting worse more sin oh hey sin how are you doing yeah but we just stay there sometimes because i don't know we're like a deer in the headlights but it tells us right there the book tells us right there his word tells us he will also provide a way out we have cell phones 
You can reach out to a brother in Christ. You can reach out to a loved one, a friend, somebody. Whatever you're going through at that moment, that scenario, that at that time, run it by them. If they truly care about you, you'll be like, hey, where are you at? I'll come pick you up. Or meet me at the at the 7-Eleven. Or just get out of there. Just get out of there. He provides a way. He always does. But we fall to our flesh. We fall to the desires of our flesh. When our faith and our strength is not up to par, especially our faith. Because if your faith is up to par, you know that he won't put you. He won't do you wrong like that. So we need to step our faith up. That's it. I'm guilty of that myself, too. A lot of times, oh, man, why, 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 why? Maybe there's a lesson in the why. Maybe there's a lesson in what you're going through. But if we're not open-minded, if you're just a one track, if you just keep thinking the way you have always, you're going to get the same result, the same results. And that's what we're talking about today, covering today, you know, the same results, the same way of thinking. If you don't change the way you, the way you think, if you don't put it, if you don't put yourself in God's shoes, I mean, we can't fill those shoes, but, you know, the way he thinks, the way he sees, we'll see the, 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 the situation differently. Our perspective will change. When your perspective changes, your way of, everything changes. Everything follows suit right behind that. When you stop thinking the way you used to and change your perspective. Look at the glass half full, not half empty. You know, you've heard that before, right? It's tough. It's really tough to do that on a daily basis when you're homeless, when you're struggling, when you're hungry, when it's wet, when it's too hot. But then think about Jesus Christ. He was nailed to that cross. He suffered. He cried. He was mocked for our sins, for our sins. When you truly dwell on that, it should inspire you. It should give you some motivation, some hope. Man, I'm here crying about a stupid 7-Eleven big gulp. Or I'm tripping because they wouldn't let me fill up my cup at Burger King. And I'm cussing this person out. Or I go use a restroom at, at Burger King and leave it a big mess. And mess it up for the rest of the brothers and sisters who are homeless who have to use that restroom too. You know? You change your way of thinking, guys, ladies. I'm not perfect. I don't claim anything I'm telling you right now, I'm going through right now myself, in process. I'm learning, living and learning, living and learning. I'm not here claiming to be anything, anything, other than a man who is down but not out. A man who has faith, and I, I have faith in God. Amen. Thank you, sister. I love you. Number three. Oh, one last thing to that. The wisdom of the world pursues you, not the wisdom of God. It's like you have two ladies. I learned this last night over at the church, uh, the lighthouse in Costa Mesa. I'm serious about learning this. <laughs> Every day I try to be in church. But last night I learned this. At an intersection, just picture two ladies, okay? I don't know why they, it, it, was brought, it was broken down like this. Picture two ladies at an intersection. The one that represents God is... Quiet, still, there. The other one, the counterfeit, we'll call her harlot. She's the devil. And as soon as you pass that intersection, the harlot will chase you. The harlot will pursue you. The harlot will say, well, you know, hey, this looks great. Let's hang out here. Let's do this. Let's do that. We'll paint a beautiful picture for you. God won't pursue you. He'll let you go through that experience to see. He does t test our faith. So when, you're in some, when you yourself are in that position, just ask yourself. Just, you know, do a checklist. I have to do a checklist in my head every day. When I wake up, during the day, at night. You have to practice. It takes time. When I said earlier about the way you think, I'm 42 years old. So I've been living my life a certain way for a long time. You know? So I have to sometimes do, the, do this checklist, this mental checklist. I don't talk out loud, but I say it you know, to myself in my head and run it down really quick. Is this good for me? What would Jesus do? Do I need to call somebody? Or do I just keep walking and ignore? Is this an opportunity for me to talk about God? 
break the ice. You never know when you're that vessel. You never know when God puts you in certain situations. You're too busy looking at it like, oh man, this is terrible. What's going on here? Why am I here? But God puts us in certain situations, in certain people's lives, at certain times for a reason. Like Chris was saying earlier, we have purpose. We have purpose. And we shouldn't waste our time every day. And you know, those sl especially those slow times when you're bored. That's when things, that's when you can go left. Dead time, boredom. Fill it, you know, fill it with God, 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 Jesus. Pick up your Bible, pick up your phone, that app, whatever you need to do. Talk to a brother, talk to someone who has knowledge, fellowship. Fill, up, fill that empty time. So number three is God wants you to take action now. That's number three. And if you take action to allow God to change you and keep moving forward in his transformation process in your life, your future will be blessed and secure. A couple months ago, I got out of jail. Doesn't matter what for. That's not important. I'm not here to glorify that. A lot of guys brag about their time in jail, this and that, whatever. I'm not impressed. I don't care how much time, how many years you've done. I don't care about your past because I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to judge you by your actions of what you've done in the past. I'm supposed to judge you by who I see and what I go through with you now as a person. So, after two months, I'm, I'm out, right? And I'm like, okay, God. Well, let me rewind that a little bit. Let me rewind back. I shared God inside, inside jail. This time going in, I knew I was at peace. This was a complete different, different experience this time. Because I went in with God. And I told one of my pastors, I'm going to talk about God when I go in and turn myself in. And sure enough, I did that. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah, I was scared. Like, really? I'm going to talk about God in, inside a very dark place. But I did. And two young, men, two young men in their early 20s, they gave their life to Jesus Christ. I don't take no credit for that. All that is God, God, God's work. He put me in there. He already knew way before I knew. But all praise and glory go to him. And I pray. I pray for those two guys every day. I hope that they're still living, walking in the word, you know, because... I wish, I wish I was that young buck at 20-something years old instead of now. But you know what? We all have purpose. There's a reason for everything. Don't feel like, oh, my life has been wasted. No. If you haven't learned from all your trials and tribulations and you're 40-something years old, there might be something wrong. You might need to change your way of thinking. So I'm out now, and I'm like walking, you know, I'm back on the bus. I'm homeless. I go to church on a Saturday morning over at the crossing in Costa Mesa, and there's an advocate. I have many advocates, you know, at different churches. People who I look up to and, you know, pick their brains, check up with, you know, uh, what's that word here before? I just check in with, people I check in with. And uh, this man told me, Bert, I had, uh, I had a dream last night, and God told me that I need to give you my truck. You know, he bought a new truck, and this was a truck that was sitting in the driveway. And I was so blown away. I was just so, so blown away, you know, like, wow. Could I do that, you know? Would I just sell an extra truck, you know, and just put the cash in the bank or whatever, take care of bills? This man gave me his truck, so I'm fresh out of jail. I'm telling you, God will bless you if you walk with him, if you have faith, if you read, acknowledge that he died for our sins. Just acknowledge that he, and have a relationship with him. Talk to him. You don't have to be here sitting in front of us, you know, praying hallelujah, this and that. You don't have to. It's a personal relationship. Churches, your body is, the, is a temple. Anywhere where you're gathered with two or more people, if you're talking about God, guess what? He is there. You don't have to go to the lighthouse. You don't have to go to St. Joseph's. That's nice. That's great. You know what I mean? That's good. But I'm constantly talking with fellow brothers, other homeless brothers, every day about God. And every day, man, I get this feeling in my heart like I'm just so grateful. Why? Why? But I, I know why. Because he loves us. doesn't matter how, how bad of a person you think you are. 
Mm -mm. He loves us. He loves you. He loves me. He wants the best for you. Just have a relationship with him. Take time out of your day. Thank him. Get down on your knees. That's the most powerful position you can be in. Pray, 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 pray. It's not just about good deeds. It's just about feeding the homeless. It's not about those. It's not about that. That's not going to get you into heaven. Your heart. Your actions. What he sees. So that was number three. God wants you to take action now. Matthew 6.34. So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. Just be now. Just be in the now. Enjoy now. Enjoy your life now. Don't worry about tomorrow. He'll take care of it. I forgot. I think it's in the same book, right, Chris? Where he talks about the uh, he takes care of the birds. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. worry about the birds. Don't you see I feed them? I'll, surely I think more of you than the birds. I'm paraphrasing. I will take care of you as well. And just know this. When you start walking with the Lord, you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose people that you think are friends. Heck, you might even lose family members who aren't believers or think a certain other way. It's a very narrow path when you walk with the Lord. He will provide. He will give you joy, peace. But you are going to lose friends, so-called friends. And guess what? Maybe you don't need them, you know, people in your life. It's okay. If you have God, you have everything. If God is for us, who can be against us? That's right. No one. Amen. So stop worrying about what other people are doing, their walks, what they're hustling for, what bikes they have, what new tent they have, where they're giving out gift cards. Who cares about that? Live your life for the Lord. Walk with God. Don't let go of his right hand. And you will see the blessings. You will see the blessings. They will be revealed to you. And it's not even about the blessings. It's just about doing what's right. When you help other people, that's the best feeling that you get inside. I'm homeless, but I'm able. I'm able to provide now. I helped some lady. You know, I'm not bragging about this. I'm just saying. I was able to help a lady with her storage. Move it from one facility to another facility. At first, she told me, you know what? I'll be able to pay you $20 for gas. Don't worry. Fine. That's cool. That's all I need. Yeah, I just need no gas. When I got to, after the job was done, guess what? She didn't have the $20. I don't know why. Maybe she was scared to tell me from the beginning. But I told her, don't worry about it. God will, God will pay me back later. Don't worry about it. I have enough gas to get to where and from I need to get. Don't worry about that. She started crying. Yeah, I almost started crying. <laughs> but that felt so good for me to be able to do something for someone and nothing was coming back. Nothing was coming back. So let just fill your heart like that. Think about this word, joy. Jesus, others, then yourself. Joy. Jesus, others, and then yourselves. All right, brothers and sisters, God bless you all. Have a great day. Stay warm. Stay cool. Whatever it is. And we are out. Very cool.